Hi, I'm Emily Baldwin, reporting for ESA Web TV, and I'm with Lawrence O'Rourke, Rosetta Downlink Science Operations Manager. Larry, now that the data has been downlinked from the spacecraft, what does that mean for your role? Well, now that operations is finished, and the teams really are focusing on the science that's within the data. And my role is to try to get that science in the archive in a format which can be used uh, for generations, by generations to come. And what does that mean? Well, it means getting the data in, 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 in a calibrated form uh, with, with the best calibration existing, using laboratory data, checking the, the consistency with what they're measuring on the ground, with what they're measuring on, on, on in the lab or in the, and against uh, what was measured on the comet. And all of this is, is working with the teams uh, to, to get the best out of them so that we can give this data to the public. And how, how does that actually work, working with the, with the teams and their data? How does the data look and, and how do you get it into a format that, that maybe I could see? Well, there's a lot of work in, involved in the process because uh, the teams themselves, you can certainly see it's a lot more, uh, a lot more relaxed in that the, the operations pressure is not there. But also they're all focused on getting the science out of their data and, and so they're trying to improve the data, trying to improve the calibration, uh, getting better, uh, let's say, uh, well, for example, producing thumbnails so that people, the public can actually visualize the data without having to go too much into the data sets themselves. The delivers format this data into uh, to ourselves in, in ESAC. We process it, we put it into the archive and we provide it in, in an accessible way via a user interface, a web interface. So we know already that there's lots of images in the archive, we can see those very well. Are you also trying then to visualise um, like spectra and plasma information also to make it more easily uh, digestible? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's not just about imagery, it's also about the, 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 the spectroscopy, or the, the spectral data that's been measured, the plasma that's been, that's been obtained, the plasma data obtained from the, the spacecraft. All of this data you want to uh, give, let's say, a, a first image view of what's there so that those who are interested can then delve into the data more and, and try to see what's been missed. Because I can tell you this, there's a lot of science in this data that hasn't been seen before. Uh, the, there's only a certain amount of people involved in, in extracting the science in the PI teams. This data is now available to the public and, uh, and those who delve into it will find a lot of surprises and I think there's some great science to be achieved here. Yeah, so now that the data is there, we can really get stuck into the science. Absolutely. We're, we're, we spend a lot of time trying to enhance the data, producing what's called higher level products. What does that mean? It means that instead of just getting a spectra, effectively what you're doing is you're trying to analyze, you've already analyzed the spectra to say, well, it belongs to these different types of molecules. But uh, that's just for spectra. But for, similarly for the imagery, you're trying to do geometrical analysis, trying to say, well, where are you exactly when you look at this on the comets, when you look at this data, removing stray light, all of this is ways of improving the data so that those who, ac who access it don't have to, to deal with removing these effects. They already can see the science uh, staring at them. Well, we can certainly see how important it is to archive data to preserve the legacy of a mission. So much so, actually, that you already work on archives for future missions that haven't even launched. Why is it important to, be, to start building those archives now? Well, I think it, the, the key that we're seeing with Rosetta, which was such a, a long-term mission, uh, is that, that if you begin early and you find the formats early and, and, and the software that's written by the teams, if you can write that software as soon as possible, it makes it a lot easier then when they start to get the real data from their, from their instruments from, from space. It's produced already in the format, it goes in, straight into the archive and directly out to the public. And this, this I think, is, is the key. You want to, to, have, to reduce the turnaround time from when the data is produced by the instrument to when it gets out publicly. Thank you, Larry. It certainly sounds like there's still busy times ahead. I'm Emily Baldwin. Thanks for watching ESA Web TV.